Here's my one year Ed Gun Layla review. I've been putting it off for some time, and finally I have to review it. I've done everything I needed to with this gun. I put four to five thousand shots in it. I've had it since May of second week of May of 2018, and it's just blew my mind. If I compared it to all of my other air guns, I would have picked this one far beyond all of them because it performed amazingly this last year for me. I can't believe how great this gun is. Before I bought it, I didn't really know much about Ed Gun. I didn't know the reviews of any reviews on this. Uh, there was none out here because it was completely new. I actually got one of the first ones, the first batch that came in the States. I got one. Serial number 138. And then the, not only is it pretty low, but the first Layla's actually say Matador on them. Uh, so I got one of a kind. The first ones that came into the States, first ones made. And boy, people say don't get the first batch of guns no with this one they somebody must have been looking at it closely because it was absolutely great for the entire year I have put four to five thousand shots I'm more like five thousand I started keeping track um, at a thousand about who was center rain so I know everything about this gun, so this review, I'm not just reviewing a gun that somebody sent to me. I'm reviewing a gun that I know, I feel I know more about than everyone, almost everyone, because I've done nothing but use this gun almost exclusively for an entire year straight. All right, specifications of the Edgun Layla. I had to write them all down so I don't forget any. The total length of the Layla is 23.5 inches. The barrel length is 14.84 inches. The gun weight without anything is 6.4 pounds. The air reservoir is 190 cc's that could make it up to 300 bar the walnut stock it comes in a walnut stock I upgraded to a laminate I'll tell you why later it comes with two 10 shot magazines it has a capacity of holding three they are plastic magazines which in my opinion is a good thing if you think about it a lot of other guns we've seen they have metal magazines, metal breech, metal pellet pusher. The softest thing in there is a pellet and that gets damaged. With these, the plastic is soft, softer than the lead or about the same as the lead. So it's less, in my opinion, I feel, believe the pellet gets scratched up less with the plastic magazine and plus the cheap to replace. So, has a dual sided safety. This. The reg is factory set at 125 bar. Talk about that later. The moderator has a built in integrated moderator with baffles inside. It works well. I have a video online earlier that I put on. It comes with a fill probe and has adjustable trigger. And each gun comes now comes with a full set of o-rings if you ever need them I haven't needed them yet and all comes to a cost of sixteen hundred eighty dollars people say it's too expensive but you gotta remember see what you got with it you got magazine holders you don't have to buy other guns you do you got moderators that oftentimes they can be 200 bucks for a big one I did spend 200 bucks on one of mine on a different gun comes with a walnut stock. Oftentimes you have to upgrade $100 to $200 more for walnut stock. So given everything you got that comes with this gun, I feel it's priced completely appropriate.
All right, shotgun count and power. Uh, the egg gun Leva can be uh, depending on the pellet weight. You can adjust the little hammer string. Hammer spring with a little screw, a little nut in there. You turn it counterclockwise to tighten, clockwise to loosen, and then it can go like from anywhere around 26 foot pounds to about 35 if I remember correctly, depending on the pellet weight. But I found that the 18 grain JSB perfect flies at 860, it's right around 30 foot pounds. That's just what the gun's designed for. And for shot count, um, if I fill to 210 bar, I get exact a little over three magazines at 30 foot pounds. And then if I fill to 300 bar, I get six over six magazines at 30 foot pounds. So there's nothing weak there. Power. It's such a short gun, 14 inch barrel, 30 foot pounds. Shot count over 60 for a 300 bar fill. Wow. All right, one of the first things I did when I got my Leva of May of 2018, I think it was the second week of May of 2018, before I knew it was coming, I went out and bought as many pellets as I can, hoping to find the perfect pellet that would work perfectly better than the 18 grain JSB. But I tested all these pellets right here. Uh, but in the end, only four really caught my attention. Um, the JSB Ultra Shock, uh, they hit really hard, they group nice. Show you photos. The Premier, the cheapest pellets you can buy actually were pretty good 14.3 grain Crossman's, and then the redesigns, the new redesigns. But uh, problems with these two pellets is that they didn't group past 50 yards very well. These group good if you can get them up to 900, or way over 900 feet per second. But the Layla got close, but the shot count suffered too much. These started wobbling everywhere after 50 yards. And uh, the Crossman just had too many I mean they 10 9 out of 10 group nice but there was always one major flyer I'll show you that fo those photos too so in the end it was the JSB 18 grainers that were for long range you can go I've shot pigeon out to 122 yards with these they worked fine the rest of them were so so these actually flew good up to about 40 yards perfect and then they're, but they, uh, they just got hit in the wind too much, so you couldn't really tell. But on a non-windy day, these work great up to about 40 or 50 yards. But other than that, none of them really were that great. All right, next we come to the Layla safety, which is quite different. It's on both sides, so it's right or left-handed. Right here. And if the gun, it's very unique. Actually, I didn't completely understand it at first, but you cannot put it on safe when it's cocked. I didn't understand that, but now I do. So a gun that is has a spring loaded can never be safe so therefore what you do is bring the action back hit the trigger that slide forward and depress the spring and then the guns can be put in safe showing you indicating to you that the springs not even loaded it's completely safe then if you see a uh, game you just hit the safety either side hit the magazine in disengagement hit bring it down Reload, aim, fire. Very unique, but um, I would give it 
10 out of 10 because this gun makes you be really safe, makes you decock it every time to put on safety. Then All right, uh, trigger. I got lay this trigger. I actually never even adjusted it out of the box. There's the first stage. Clear, short, brakes. No, people said there was travel in the second stage. There's not much at all. Brakes really cleanly. There's some weight behind it, but You know, when you're hunting, you want to be able to feel the trigger through gloves. And then when it's cold out and your fingers are numb, you always want to feel that second stage clearly. And I can always do it. I had thick, warm winter gloves last year hunting. No problems with trigger. Never went off prematurely. I could always feel that right there. Break. And it is adjustable. It's absolutely adjustable. There's two screws. I never had to adjust it, but see, there's a couple screws in there you can play with and get them down light if you want a light trigger. Ed made several videos on that. And I'm going to be testing the weight of the trigger with my trusty old fish wear. I know it's not ideal for triggers, but it gives a precise reading. If you do it slow, I'll do three right off the bat without stopping the camera and we'll see what the, it gets. Uh, about two and a half, I believe. I've never actually done this before, so I'm thinking it's between two and a half and maybe a little more than two and a half. We'll see. Here we go. I'll do all three tries all in a row, same take. topic of a regulator uh, when I first purchased this uh, Layla I noticed the regulator was jumping around quite a bit I think when I first shot it it was a 40 foot per second spread and uh, I nearly bought a Huma regulator I was thinking I needed one but after maybe a thousand shots I could tell that it was becoming flatter it went from a 40 foot per second spread on like a I think it was 10 shots. It had a 35 to 40 foot spread. It went down to 25 foot spread. And now I'm right at about a 12 foot per second spread, 12 or 13. I'll uh, show a magazine clip. So all in all, I think the regulator is fine for this gun. You don't need a Huma because the gun, for instance, is not a, made to be long range. I mean, nobody would be shooting long range with such a short gun, so that can buck so much and move around so much. So there's no point of buying a Huma to get little bits of accuracy at long range. Next I come to the Layla's Ergonomics, which 
ex it absolutely excels. The whole reason I bought this gun was because I was carrying around a Turkish heavy gun that weighed probably three pounds more, four pounds more, much longer. And I just wanted something I didn't have to drag through the brush. I could just tuck under my arm like this, drag through the brush and something I could have had some sort of strap capabilities, which I use quite a bit. I always walking through brush, looking at stuff. I can just drop the label like this and do something. I don't have to set it down or try to hold both. And it comes to the shoulder so easily. Even if I wasn't with the strap, there's a million ways to carry it. One of my favorite ways is like this. Walking through brush. You can carry it like this. It's got this nice hand grip. Carry it like this. I often carry it like this also. I don't have a strap. Under the arm. And then you can also carry it from this grip pretty easily. Just let your arm hang straight. So, out of the ergonomics, if I had to rate it, the Layla would be getting like a 12, maybe 13 out of 10. So, that was quick and simple. Next comes the durability of the Layla. The, one of the other reasons I bought that was because of the reviews I read online about the Ed guns and how durable and strong they are is why I wanted to get one. The other guns I had, which was a Turkish one and an American one, uh, I was always constantly calling people trying to order parts because I was just too rough on them. So the reason I got this was because I heard the dur durability was good and believe me it is absolutely I cannot believe I have not done anything to this gun I've used this gun 10 times more than all the other guns that I used and I have not had one issue not one breech o-ring replacement not one leak nothing I even slipped last November I made a video about it and it slammed on, on the ice and cracked my wood stock of the gun and uh, ended up getting a laminate which is by the way is much stronger than the wood but anyway the, after I cracked, put a little crack in the wood stock I tested the gun and everything was shooting perfect the scope didn't get knocked off it was dead zero no nothing it when I slipped I hit so hard on the ice that the gun actually bounced and put a huge dent in the ice. It bounced a couple times, so it hit hard. I had it in my hand like this, and it hit, bounced up, and slammed back down on the ice on the nose, and nothing, nothing was wrong with it. And over the year, the year of heavy use, the only ish, really area where I thought the, it was mostly my fault, I was rubbing against fences and laying the gun down on things is it in a little bit of the paint not paint but the Cerakote or what do we call it came off and a little bit of tarnish on the charging handle from the salt in my hands touching it both charging handles other than that there is really nothing wrong with this gun nothing absolutely nothing the most durable gun i've ever owned by far on durability wise the Leo will be getting another like 12 13 14 out of 10 in my opinion